Well, I want to introduce you to somebody new here at CBC. This is our new assistant pastor, Chris Sisler. Come and preach for the first time as assistant pastor <laughs> since years ago. Since years ago. <laughs> well, amen. Thank you. Hosea in your Bibles this evening. Hosea, the first of the minor prophet books as far as in order uh, that you find them in the Bible. Uh, so if you go to Isaiah and go a couple books for it, you will find the book of Hosea. For those of you that aren't uh, that are have kids, I want to encourage you to bring your kids uh, to the Harper's Ferry uh, gathering. It's a great time. I'm looking forward to playing some hide and seek with my kids, of dropping them off, go and get some ice cream, and see if they can find their way back to me. And uh, that's always a good time. And they always seem to find their way home. It's an amazing thing. Kids, uh, they can always get home. But I encourage you to come. It'll be a great time out there. The Book of Hosea is a wonderful love story. It's not quite a love story that as you're flipping through the channel and you find yourself on Hallmark that you're going to find on the Hallmark channel, but it's, a, uh, it's an amazing love story of a man and a woman and really of God and a people. Hosea was a prophet who lived and prophesied in the northern kingdom, which is often referred to as Israel or sometimes Ephraim, which was the largest tribe in the northern kingdom. He prophesied, if you look at the uh, map up here, during the time of around 780 to, to 725 uh, BC. And you can see that is just before the Assyrian captivity. This is God's last message to the children of Israel. He has been trying to get their attention. He's been sending prophet after prophet to try to wake them up, to let them know that trouble was coming. And this is the last message that he has for the northern kingdom. And he gives this message through a story, through an illustration of a man and his family. We don't know a lot of personal information about Hosea other than the fact that he's the son of Barry, it says in verse number one of chapter one. But we know that he was a married man with a very complicated marriage. And this complicated marriage forms the basis of the message that God used to speak to the children of Israel. The first message that Hosea received from God that we have here was for him to go find a wife. Amen. That is awesome. That's exciting. Time to get a wife. Yes, I love that part of the story. But not just any woman would do. Look with me in chapter 1, verse number 2. The Bible says, The beginning of the word, the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife, amen, of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Go and take a wife. From whoredoms, a prostitute. What? That doesn't sound like, you know, when, when guys grow up dreaming about what kind of wife they want. That's not typically the, the thought that comes to mind. But that's what God tells Hosea to do. Go find a wife that was a prostitute. And God commanded her to find her. Not just find her, but to marry her. And so I'm, not, I'm sure this isn't the one he dreamed of marrying. But he obeyed God. He, so he found her. He married her. And they had three children together. The first son, in verse number four, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Jezreel was a place in the Bible where, where Jezebel had Naboth killed so that her husband, King Ahab, could own his vineyard. As a result, God told Ahab and Jezebel that their blood and the blood of their children would also be shed there. Later, Jehu, a military captain, would kill King Jer Jeroham, uh, the son of Ahab, and his entire family taking the throne. And this happened in the town of the place of Jezreel. And so when Hosea prophesied uh, that the, that the uh, or when God told Je uh, Hosea to name his son Jezreel, the, there had been three generations already on the throne. The fourth generation, God told Jehu that when his fourth generation came on the throne, that Israel would be punished. That his generation would be punished. Three generations had come. This third generation was going great. Life was prosperous in Israel at this time. They thought things were wonderful. There was no problem. They 
they had wealth, they had riches, they had prosperity. Things were going great in the land. But God had a message for them. Judgment had come. The judgment of Jezreel had come upon the land. And so it seemed unlikely from a humanistic perspective that Israel was in trouble. But God says judgment time is here. It is drawing near. And it's going to happen at the place where blood has been shed. In the place of Jezreel. And so he tells them, name your first son Jezreel. Hosea and Gomer would have another child. This time a precious little girl. And Erica gets so jealous every time she reads about little girl being born with our five boys. God told, her, told them to call this little girl Lo Ruama. Lo Rama means she has not obtained mercy. God would no longer show mercy to the house of Israel. God would no longer overlook the sins of Israel. Look in verse 6 and it says, And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo Rama, For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. But I will utterly take them away. Judgment was drawing. Shortly thereafter, Hosea and Gomer had another son. They would call his name Lo-Ami. Lo-Ami means not my people. Now, this was when he was born. I, and I understand us saying that when our kids are older. That's not my kid. Uh, but this was when he was born, Lo-Ami. Of course, when some of my boys were born, I thought that, oh, that thing can't be mine. But uh, that's not the idea here. Now, it is Lo-Ami. These are not my people. In verse number nine, it says, Then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. They will no longer be the people of God, Israel. Sometime later, Gomer would leave Hosea and return to her former lifestyle as a prostitute. The Bible doesn't give us a lot of details about this or when exactly it happens. Perhaps the, uh, the name of, names of her children bothered her that, that her husband said, God said, we have to name our children. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. You're not my people. And that bothered her and she left. We don't know. But she left. We don't know the reason. But she went back to her lifestyle as a prostitute. It says in verse number five, the first part, for their mother hath played the harlot. It says in chapter number three, verse number one, then said the Lord unto me, go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, yet an adulteress. And so Gomer leaves Hosea and she goes and commits adultery. Sometime later, God speaks to Hosea again. And this time he goes and tells him to take his wife again unto, her, unto himself. He said, go yet in verse chapter 3, verse 1. Love a woman, beloved of referring yet adulterers, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I bought, her, uh, brought, bought to her to me for 15 pieces of silver, and for a homer of barley, and for a half homer of barley. And so despite everything that, that Hosea had done for her, she left. And she went back to her old lifestyle. Beside, despite the love that he had showed her, she rejected him and left him. And now God is telling him to go back and get her again. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine how difficult that must have been on Hosea. To love a woman that the world deemed unlovable. To receive her to, as, your, as your wife. To show her love. To have children. And then her leave. And go back to her old lifestyle. And now God comes and says, go get her again. I can't imagine the emotional struggle that must have been for Hosea. How difficult that was for him. But he went. But not only did he have to go and say, come back honey, I forgive you. The Bible said that he had to go and buy her for 15 pieces of silver. Apparently at some point along this line, she had to sell herself into slavery. Whether it was in the, in the temple as a prostitute of Baal or to another man. But Hosea could not just go and invite her back to his house. He had to go and he had to purchase her and buy her back and spend money to receive her back unto, him, unto himself. And, and so he buys her and he says, not only am I your husband, I'm your owner now and I will love you. He says in verse 3, he said, and I said unto her, thou shalt abide for me many days and thou shalt not play the harlot. And thou shalt not be for another man, so will I be, also be for thee. He said, I'm going to love you again. I'm going to be with you again. I'm going to care for you again. You know, this is a strange love story. This is definitely not something you find in Hallmark, is it? You're not going to find this. This isn't going to get great ratings uh, on the Hallmark channel. 
But this is an amazing story that God had for specific people. Judgment is coming to them. They think everything's good. They think everything's all right in their lives. And God uses this man and his love story with his wife as a, a un, help us understand God's relationship with the children of Israel. And we see that despite her de de decisions, despite her rejections, Hosea loves Gomer. He receives her as his wife. And so this love story is both beautiful, romantic, and also tragic. And it forms the basis that God, the lesson that God has for them. It's an amazing illustration of God's relationship with the children of Israel. There's three basic parts uh, to this story. The first part is the marriage. The marriage. God commanded Hosea to go find a wife who was a prostitute. He didn't tell him to go look for the prettiest lady or the richest lady, or a queen, or even somebody of good character. Hosea was to marry someone who was not loved by other people. And that is what God had done for the children of Israel. Several times throughout this book, Hosea makes reference uh, to the fact that God brought e Israel out of the land of Egypt. Look with me in chapter 2, in verse 15. And it says, I will give her her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. It says in verse chapter number 12, we're going to be jumping back and forth throughout this book. In chapter 12, verse number 9, it says, and I am I that am the Lord thy God from the land of of Egypt will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles. In chapter 13, verse 4, it says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. I did not know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great. I did know thee in the land of wilderness, in the land of great drought. There was nothing special about the children of Israel. And several times God has, is illustrating when he found them, he brought them out of Egypt. Abraham was the first one that entered into a marriage relationship with God. God entered the relationship with the man Abraham. Abraham was just a pagan man who had some wealth, but from an earthly perspective, uh, there was nothing great about him. But he trusted God, and God promised that he would become a great nation. And this promise was passed down to his son Isaac, and later to his son Jacob, who would become Israel. Jacob fathered the 12 sons who were the 12 tribes of Israel. Due to famine, they eventually went down to Egypt where they became slaves. And 400 years later, God brought them out of Egypt. They did nothing to deserve this liberation and this relationship with God. But God sought them out. Then in the desert, God entered into a relationship with them. They even took vows. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, it's a great book of vows of God entering into a marriage relationship with the children of Israel. He said, if you do this, I will do this. If you obey me and you do what I want you to do, I will do this. They were entering into covenant of vows in those relationships. And God promised that he would bless them if they did good. And God promised that he would curse them if they didn't do good. And they agreed to and they said, yes, God, we're in agreement with you. We enter into this relationship with you. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, they finally entered the promised land. And there God blessed them and he cared for them and he corrected them when they went astray. God was Israel's husband. He chose them when they were nothing, just like Hosea chose Gomer. There was nothing special about Israel, and yet God loved them. God cared for them, and he entered into a relationship with them. There was nothing special about Gomer, and in fact, she was one of the least likely women that any man would choose. And likewise, there was nothing special about Israel. They were slaves. Abraham wasn't a special man. Israel and Egypt wasn't a special people. However, God loved them, and God chose them. And he established a relationship with them. But just like Gomer, Israel would reject God. Israel would enter into a different relationships with other people. And so we see the, the betrayal of Israel, the betrayal of Gomer and God's punishment to them. Ch look in chapter number 9, verse number 1. And the Bible says, Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people... For thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. In chapter number 5, verse number 3, 
It says, I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. In chapter 4, verse 10, it says, For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. And so over and over again, God says Israel has been unfaithful. Israel has gone after other gods. God said, I love them. I chose them out of slavery. I cared for them. I was their God. I was their husband. I loved for, had a great love for them. And yet they have gone after other gods. They have entered into whoredom and they have left me. How did they do that? They behave like pagan nations around them. In verse number one of chapter four, it says, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. What a sad testimony. There was no truth or mercy with the people. There was no knowledge of God in the land. They didn't even know God. They had gone so far away from God. They didn't even know him. It says in verse 2, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. They were acting just like the world acted. There was nothing special about them. There was nothing different about them. They were acting just like the pagan nations around them, not like the children of God, not like the people of God. They had rejected their God and gone away from God. They began to trust in themselves. It says in verse 6 of chapter 4, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory and the shame. Do you get that? As they grew in prosperity, as they became a nation that was powerful and prosperous financially. You say, oh, we don't need God. We're good. We're fine by ourselves. Man, does that not sound like people nowadays? Oh, we don't need God. We're fine. We have everything we need. And they grew in their prosperity and they rejected God. They no longer needed God. When they were coming out of Egypt and slaves and wandering around the wilderness, they needed God. There were too many people that were there that were powerful giants in the land that was too strong for them. They needed God's help and so they turned to God. But then God blessed them. They became prosperous. And they said, oh, never mind, we're good. God, we're fine. We don't need your help anymore. And they rejected God. They went away from God. The word knowledge in verse number six, they had a destroyed for lack of knowledge. That word knowledge is not knowing something about someone. But it is to know someone intimately as a husband knows a wife. It's the idea of relationship. Israel had left her relationship with God. Just as, as Gomer left Hosea. Israel continued to make sacrifices to God. They continued to, to talk about God. But the reality is they had left God. And God doesn't want just praise from our lips. God wants our hearts. That's what God is desire after. It's just like any husband and any wife desire. If you just go up to your wife and say I love you. But never do anything with them. Never spend any time with them. Never do acts of love to them. Those words are hollow. They want intimacy, relationship, desire from the heart. And they were praising God with their lips, but not with their hearts. Look in chapter 6, verse number 6. It says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. And because they rejected God, God has rejected them. And the result would be punishment. If you go over to chapter 13, verse number 16. The Bible says, Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. And their women with child shall be ripped up. God says, there's serious judgment coming. Because you rejected me. Because you didn't follow me, there's judgment coming. Samaria, the northern part, the kingdom north, would go through terrible, terrible times. Idols would be torn down. They would suffer hunger. They would become scattered among the nations. They rejected God. And so God rejected them. 
They rejected God, and so God rejected them. They had returned back to their old lifestyle that they had lived before, before God had rescued them, just as Gomer had left Hosea. But just like Hosea, God is not finished with, with Israel. Now we see the last part, the restoration. The restoration. Remember the names of Hosea's second and third children? Lo Ruama and Lo Ami. Lo Ruama means she has not obtained mercy. Lo Ami means not my people. Look with me back in chapter 2 again. In verse number 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, say ye unto your brethren, Ami, and to your sisters, Ruama. What's different? The lo is removed. That word lo, that two letter word lo means not. Where it was not my people, not my children, she has not obtained mercy, now means she will retain, obtain mercy. It now means she is my people. God's people would be forgiven. In verse 10 of chapter 1 it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And so God says you are going to obtain mercy. There's coming a day. When they will return, they will turn from their sin and return to God. Over in chapter number 14, in verse number 1, the Bible says, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon the horses, neither shall we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are God's. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. And so they turn away from their sin. There's coming a day where Israel's going to turn away from their sin. And they're going to turn back to their God. Just like Gomer turned back to Hosea when he went and sought her. And that, when that day comes, God says in verse number 4, chapter 14. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree. And his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. And they shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. God says, I'm going to bless them again. I'm going to be their God. I'm going to be with them. And I'm going to love them and care for them and provide for them and protect them and bless them. Just like I did in times past and even in a greater sense. And, and on that day, God will take Israel to be his wife again. It says in chapter 2 and verse number 19. It says, I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and now shalt know the Lord. He's going to receive them again. He's going to bless their land in verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people. And thou shalt say, thou art my God. They will no longer be Lo Ruama and Lo Ami, but Ruama and Ami. They will, be, they will receive mercy and be the people of God. Just as Hosea restored the relationship with Gomer, so God will restore his relationship with his wife again in Israel. Do you see the story? Here's a man that God used, a prophet, to show, God was using them to show him his great love for them. He cared for them. And he sums it all up in chapter number 11. Chapter 11, as amazing as you back, bounce around Hosea, you see this story played out in all these different verses. And it's basically under these three categories. And in chapter 11, he sums it all up and gives the whole story again. Go with me there, and this is where we'll close uh, this evening. In chapter number 11, God, uh, he, he says in verse number 1, When Israel was a child, then I loved him. 
and called my son out of Egypt. See, here's the marriage. He said, I loved you. I called you out of Egypt. I rescued you. I entered into a relationship with you. And they called them. So they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burnt incense to graven images. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms. But they knew not that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. And I was to them as they that take off the yokes of their jaws. And I laid meat unto them. God said, I loved them. I cared for them. I drew them unto myself. There was nothing special special about them and I gave my love to them over and over and over again I was drawing them unto myself and when they didn't when they received that they didn't reciprocate it they didn't show that same love to God as God cared for them and loved them they rejected him and betrayed him and as a result God punishes them in verse number five he shall not return into the land of Egypt but the Assyrian shall be his king because they refuse to return. And the sword shall abide on his cities. And shall consume his branches and devour them. Because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the, next, to the most high. None at all would exalt them. God says, I loved you. You rejected me. And just like you were a slave in Egypt. When I found you. You're going back into that old lifestyle. And you're going back to be slaves. And this time not in Egypt, but Assyria. And we know that Assyrian Empire is coming down in very short time. This is their last message that God has for them. The Assyrians are coming. He's gonna, they're going to utterly destroy the northern tribes. The ten northern tribes of Israel. They're going to wipe out. And God said, I tried. I was loving you. I was caring for you. I was sharing message with you. But they refuse to worship God. They refuse to worship God. They turn to their old lifestyle. And then when they called upon God, God said, all right, it's too late now. I gave you every opportunity. And they rejected him. But despite their rejection, God still loves them. Isn't that amazing? Despite our rejection, despite the sinfulness of our heart, God still loves us. Look in verse number eight. He says, how shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver the Israel? You know, you think of that, that young man that falls in love with that girl. And that girl no longer wants to be with him. And he's just, he's just heartbroken. And he don't know how he can get over the relationship. And he's, how can I get over her? I, I, I love her. I care for her so much. And my, my heart's just broken. I'm sure some of you had entered into those childhood relationships where you, you love someone and they reject you and you're just... But how, how can I get over that person? Your heart is just broken for that person. And that's God with Israel. He says, how can I give her up? I love her too much. My heart just goes for her. I care for her. I love her. And I want to be in a relationship with her. After all he had done for them. And despite the fact that they rejected him. God said, I love you. I love you still, and I want her into a relationship with you. It says in verse 11, Thou shalt tremble as a bird out of Egypt, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria, and I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. God says, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to take you back out of Assyria, even though you're going to be in trouble, even though it's going to be difficult for you. I'm going to bring you back, and I'm going to restore you to the place, to your home, to the place I have for you. Do you understand what God's saying here? Do you understand the great love that God has for us? You know, you're not Israel, but if you're saved, God has entered into a, a relationship with you. You are the bride of Christ. God loves you. And you, there was nothing special about you, but God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't save us. God didn't rescue us because we're great people. We're special people and we deserve the love of God. No, we were nobodies. We are a bunch of sinners. And yet God loved us anyhow. He cared for us so much that he died on the cross of Calvary. So that we could enter into a relationship with him. However, we often, like the, the nation of Israel, go away from God. It says in James chapter number 4. James says, ye adulterers and adulteresses. You, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. God says, I love you. I cared for you. I rescued out of this world so you could have a new life. So you can live in holiness. And then when we reject that and we go sinning, 
God says, you're no different in Israel. You're like a bunch of adulterers and adulteresses who are cheating on the love of God. God says, I want that relationship with you. And we turn to our old passions and our old desires. It's like we're cheating on God. However, our beloved husband stands with open arms ready to restore us. He continues in James chapter 4 verse 6. It says, but he giveth more grace. God gives more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. If we repent from our sin, and we've returned to God, just like Israel, God says, I'll restore you. God is continuously drawing us, drawing us unto himself. He's loving us. He's caring for us. And he wants us to walk in relationship with him. God's love is amazing. His love is amazing. He paid a great price to rescue us. He gave us his own life to redeem us from slavery. And even though we're not lovable, he loves us. And as it says in chapter 11, verse number 4, it says, I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. God draws us. He cares for us. He loves us so very much. And over and over again, he sends us love, no love notes. Over and over again, he, he writes us love songs. And he says, I love you. I love you. Come back to me. Enter a relationship with me. I want to talk with you. I want to know you. And we continue astray, but God continues to love us. He wants us to have an intimate relationship with him. He draws us with bands of love. Look with me at the last verse of chapter number 14. And we'll close here. Hosea closes his message. He says, who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. And the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. You get what God's saying? He says, listen up. It's not hard. I love you. All you have to do is love me back. Be in a relationship with me. That's all I ask from you. And if you do that, I'll bless you. I'll care for you. I'll provide for you. I'll be a loving husband to you. But if you don't, there's punishment coming your way. Life's going to be hard for you. You're going to go through some difficult times. But don't worry, I still love you. And I'll still care for you. And I'll still draw you unto myself with bands of love. That's the message of Hosea. That's the last message that God has for his people right before their destruction. I love you. I love you with a love you can't understand. I love you in ways you'll never get. I love you. And that's still the message that God has for today, us today, that he loves us so very much. Let us pray. Thank you for joining us for part of a Sunday service at Community Baptist Church. I hope to meet you soon. May God impress his love upon your heart this week.